you guys. Today I am doing a double page spread stretching demonstration. To do this demonstration, you are going to need a pencil or inked illustration on the watercolor paper of your choice. We are using Canson Montval watercolor paper today. This, no, this is actually um, Canson Moulin de Roy. I'm sorry. This is a cotton rag watercolor paper. I inked this comic. It is my SCBI 2018 Illustrator Contest entry. I inked this comic with Sakura Pigma FB. So it is a pigment based brush pen and you can find out more about that in the description below. You're also going to need a piece of corrugated plastic. You're going to need a watercolor mop brush. This is a Cotman synthetic mop. You're going to need 3M blue painters tape and you want the kind that has the crepe finish. You're going to want size, I believe this is size 4 bulldog clips and size large binder clips. You're going to want a cup of water and you're also going to want some paper towels. And I like using Viva paper towels because these don't have any texture so I don't get any imprinting on my watercolor paper. So let's go ahead and get started. So when I'm stretching a double page spread like this, I use a large sheet of uh, corrugated plastic or gator board. And this is the largest one I have. I think it's like 24 by 36. And we start one uh, watercolor illustration at a time. And we're gonna kind of align it with an edge. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm remove the cat hair, or at least attempt to remove the cat hair. That can be difficult. Um, you can also use a spray bottle to sort of mist the back. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a layer of water all the way across the back. And I try to do this as quickly as possible. And I work on the floor when I do my watercolor since they tend to take up a lot of space. So I have an anti-fatigue mat down and that has helped a lot with the sort of strain from working on the floor. You can find a link to that in the description below as well. For someone like me who works on the floor all the time, it's been a huge lifesaver. All right, now that I have the back saturated, I'm going to take my paper towel roll remove the excess water flip it over align it and this has been printed with non photo blue uh, dye based ink so it's going to activate as I add my first layer of water what I will usually do in fact what I always do is I actually do two layers so I do um, this initial one, which activates all that blue. And then I'm going to squeegee that up using my paper towels. And then I do another layer, and that's my stretching layer. As you can see, that picks up pretty much all of the blue. And I say this every single time I demonstrate this technique and I talk about printing your blue lines. I once had someone comment that printing blue lines was cheating and that they do their watercolor the real way. If you created the illustration, if you created the blue lines that you are printing, it's absolutely not cheating. It's a tool to help you achieve the best results possible. So it is always okay as an artist to do what you need to do to make the best piece you possibly can, particularly if you have the right to use or if you own the assets that you're using. And since I created the illustration from start to finish, it is completely mine to do with as I wish. All right. I'm going to remove the excess water and we're going to take a little detour up and I'll show you a trick for applying the blue tape. So this is 3M blue masking tape. You want to get it about as long as the four sides. 
we adhere it to the skin and I like to use it on the non hairy part of my arm then I brush a layer of water onto it and I find this helps adhere my tape better I have used um, gummed watercolor illustration tape and I hate that stuff you're supposed to cut it off the paper when you're done I'm gonna line it with my border and then do this for all four sides and I I do this one of the short sides then I do both the long sides and then I do the top short side and I find this helps me get the best results and I've tried various methods of stretching watercolor paper I find this one works best and most consistently for me and my watercolor comic pages. I recommend that you experiment and you find a system that works for you. And I have a cat being a brat in the background, so. And as I go, when I can, I will use my bulldog clips to hold my paper tight. Now, I know people who will staple their watercolor paper to whatever surface they're using. So they'll often use um, like wooden boards. That's legit as well. I've never really needed to go that heavy duty but if you're having problems if you're working with really really large pieces that are really prone to buckling that could be the solution for you You want to make sure there are no bubbles where it's touching the paper. And I like using an inch, inch and a half blue masking tape because it allows me to fold it over my gator board surface, which means I tend to get better adhesion. Okay, so we're doing a double page spread. That means we have another. And I'm gonna try to lay them out as close to one another as possible. And that's particularly important because you're basically working on one illustration when you're doing a double page spread. And in this instance, we're doing three, but it, the, there's continuity between the two pages and the third panel is spread over both because it's a double page spread. So I want my colors to be consistent and I want this to be, I want it to line up as much as possible. And when we're doing traditional media and when we have to break it up over two pages, it can be difficult to do that. And for 7-inch Kara, I usually end up having to do a fair amount of digital correction. We're basically going to repeat the process. Try to line it up as much as, po as close as possible. And it's okay if we get some overlap. My friends have record, who record, have you guys ever noticed that your cats really start acting up off camera as soon as you hit the record button? It's like they can hear something. But as soon as you turn the camera towards them to catch these antics, they <laughs> quit doing whatever weird thing they were doing because they really don't want you. 
They really don't want you to make that sweet, sweet YouTube ad money, I guess. All right, so we're removing the blue, and now we're gonna apply another layer of water. And I go through a lot of paper towels when I'm stretching watercolor pages. You want fresh paper towels that can still absorb your water. I do uh, keep my used ones on hand because I am cheap. I'll dry them out and use them as like rags. All right, so we've got a nice even layer of water. excess over there so now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with side a it looks like it's not quite parallel so easier to fix it now than try to fix it later Now here comes the interesting, at least interesting to me part. We are going to put a piece of blue tape here down the middle. And as long as this piece is fairly dry, they will stick. And I don't try to align them both and then use just one piece because I find that's kind of tricky and kind of finicky, especially when I'm working large like this. I'm already a bit of a Butterfingers, so I find that this method is best if you work a little bit slower or if you need that extra time or if you're just clumsy. Now I'm gonna align this with the faint pencil line I did. And this is still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna use another paper towel just to squeegee off that excess water And when you're stretching like six pages at a time, it definitely starts to hurt when you peel off that blue tape. <laughs> but you do that because, and it's going to be a little gross to tell you guys this, those dead skin cells, make sure that the tape isn't overly tacky so you can actually remove it from your watercolor paper a little bit easier later on without it tearing up, wow, just right, without it tearing up your paper. Some people will like run it on their pant leg or run it on their shirt. I have cats, so I would end up with just a piece of tape covered in cat hair. All right. So ideally I would have tape, I mean, um, Bulldog clips going down these sides as well, but my gator board is just slightly too large. You can cut it down to be a perfect fit, especially if you're always going to work in the same size. This is a specialty size since it is a since it's a contest entry. Now, for the sides that are just a little too far, I actually use the metal clip part of binder clips just to help hold it in place. It's not as good as having the clip kind of clamped onto it, but it's better than nothing. You can also use another piece of tape, which is what I'm gonna do at the bottom to help secure it. 
And I'm going to wet that other piece of tape down just so that it gets a better adhesion. And then all we do is we allow this to fully dry and we can begin with our toning wash. So thank you guys so much for watching this watercolor stretching demonstration, this double page spread demonstration. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful, useful, and informative. Um, I will check in with you guys with more tutorials based around this illustration as it develops. If you're looking for more comic tutorials or watercolor tutorials, stick around, subscribe, click that bell notification. I have loads of watercolor and comic content here on this channel. Once you finish with that, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my Watercolor Basics Hub page and my Intro to Comic Craft Hub page. I have even more step-by-step -step tutorials there for you guys. So thank you guys so much. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!